The story of Bugatti is really interesting as it's really two parts. The first part is a Torre Bugatti, the founder creator of the car brand from the early 1900s who made amazing luxurious cars. But it's also the story of what happened to the brand in the last 30 years as it was reinvented to be supercars and hypercars. The story of Bugatti automobiles is a tale of triumph and tragedy. It's about a man who dared to dream big and succeeded, only to lose everything he built in a matter of years. But long after Ettore's death, from the ashes of ruin, the brand Bugatti would reemerge stronger and more successful than ever. So who is the man who birthed this legend? And how did Bugatti go from the aerodynamic curves of the Bugatti Type 35 to the powerful engines of the Bugatti Veyron? In 1881, in the quiet embrace of Milan, a curious soul entered the world. Nestled in the northern Italian air, Ettore Bugatti grew up among the whispers of artisans and the hum of industry. The Bugatti family was known for their skillful hands. His father, Carlo Bugatti, was a renowned furniture and jewelry designer. And going back another generation, Ettore's grandfather, Giovanni Bugatti, was an accomplished architect and sculptor. But Ettore was not gifted with the same artistic talents as his father and grandfather. Instead, it went to Ettore's younger brother, Rembrandt, who was three years younger and followed in the Bugatti family footsteps as a promising sculptor. But Ettore was not without talents. It turned out he displayed an insatiable curiosity and a keen interest in mechanics, and it showed. At the age of 16, to convince his father that he was better suited for a career in engineering, Ettore decided to showcase his mechanical skills. According to legend, he disassembled and reassembled a bicycle in front of his father, demonstrating his technical proficiency and understanding of mechanical systems. This impressed his father and convinced him to allow Ettore to pursue his passion for engineering. Ettore's career started with an apprenticeship at the Prenetti and Stucci factory at the age of 16, a company known for making bicycles and sewing machines. Within his first year, Ettore had designed his own motorized tricycle, which he used to compete in races. Prinetti and Stucci gave him the freedom to explore his passion in mechanics, especially the new growing invention at the time, the world of automobiles. In 1900, when Ettore was 19, he left Pernetti and Stucci with the intent of building his own car, an early entrance into a profession that would define the rest of his life. In his family home, 19-year-old Ettore began working on a new car in the family basement. He looked at the building of the car the way his family looked at creating a sculpture with great care and perfection. No detail was too small and he was involved in everything applying the same principles of engineering, mathematics, and design to a car the way his family applied them to sculpture and furniture. His talents were recognized when he was hired by the De Dietrich Company, a young automobile company located in Germany and France. In 1903, at age 22, he built another car and wanted to race it from Paris to Madrid, but he wasn't allowed to enter the race. You see, most cars at the time had the driver high up on the car, but Ettore had placed the driver and the engine low, which he believed was better for aerodynamics and center of gravity. Nowadays, we know this to be the best design, but in 1903, it stood out from all other cars in the race. In 1906, Ettore, feeling that he had learned all he needed about cars, left De Dietrich for Deutz, an engine manufacturer in Cologne, Germany. During his years at Deutz, Ettore became more and more fascinated with speed and races. Many of the cars in Germany at the time were larger, heavier vehicles, and Ettore would spend his time trying to find a lighter engine and vehicle design, which he felt would have an advantage on a racetrack. Yet again, he began working on a new automobile, the Type 10. The Type 10 was powered by a small 1.2-liter four-cylinder engine. It featured an overhead camshaft design 
and it weighed only 800 pounds. The top speed of this two-seater Type 10 was 50 miles an hour, one of the fastest at the time in 1909. It had a lightweight chassis and a simple but elegant design, a horseshoe-shaped radiator, which would become a distinctive and iconic design feature in later Bugatti models. Given the boost of confidence from the Type 10, Vittori left his job at Deutz and moved to Molsheim to found his own namesake company, Automobiles Ettore Bugatti. He put his Type 10 cars in races and did extremely well, making a name for himself as a successful car designer. Racing was a great way to get exposure, especially fast cars. 1909 was quite a year for Ettore. It was the year he started his company, created the Type 10 automobile, grew his reputation, and it was also the year of the birth of his first son, Gene. Following the triumph of the Type 10, in 1910, Ettore introduced the famous Bugatti Type 13, also known as the Brescia. This car marked a big leap forward. The engine, with its cool overhead camshaft design, made it stand out. He added leaf springs to the rear axle and adopted four valves per cylinder to create 16 valves, giving his Type 13 30 horsepower and a chassis weight of only 660 pounds. This powerhouse became a star both on the racetrack and regular roads, showing off its skills by winning the Grand Prix de Voiturettes race, taking second. Compared to the Type 10, the Type 13 was like the Big Brother. It had a more refined design, making it sleek and stylish. In 1912, Ettore introduced the Bugatti Type 18, nicknamed the Garros, it was an extraordinary luxury sports car. What set it apart was its remarkable 5.0-liter four-cylinder engine. This powerhouse allowed the Type 18 to reach an impressive top speed of 111 miles an hour, making it one of the fastest cars of its time. Beyond its speed, the Type 18 boasted an elegant and sporty design, characterized by a lengthy bonnet and open two-seater body. Notably, the car found success on the racing circuit, proving its mettle by securing victories in various races. Other models included the Type 15, 17, 22, and the Type 23. But despite the success and popularity of its early models, life wasn't easy for the Bugatti brand. Ettore was committed to creating high performance and luxurious cars, but the costs associated with designing and producing these vehicles were substantial, and the production was so extensive that it couldn't benefit from the economies of scale. The company was already finding it hard to break even, but as everyone knows, when it rains, it pours. In 1914, World War I broke out. The Bugatti factory in Molsheim was occupied by the German military for war production. This occupation disrupted Bugatti's normal activities, and the focus of the factory shifted to producing items needed for the war effort rather than luxury automobiles. Vittori was left with no other choice but to move to Paris, where he kept working on his models and car ideas. There, he worked with the Duesenberg brothers to create the U16 engine, which was essentially two straight-line engines sharing a crankcase. He called it the Bugatti U16. While it wasn't a success, it did lead him to creating an overhead camshaft and straight eight engine designs. But it was also during this time that Ettore got devastating news that his younger brother Rembrandt, the prodigy artist of his family, had taken his own life. After World War I, Bugatti, like many other companies, had to navigate the challenges of post-war reconstruction. The return to Molsheim was now French territory, which meant that Bugatti regained control of his factory. But the wartime occupation had left its mark, and the factory needed reorganization and refurbishment. The economic conditions were difficult, and the region where Bugatti's factory was located underwent significant changes due to the political aftermath of the war. Despite these challenges, Bugatti did resume automobile production after the war. The early 1920s saw the return of the mighty Type 13, which was better than ever, winning the Le Mans. 
the Brescia went on to have a five-year winning streak. And by the year 1925, Bugatti had amassed over 400 victories. The Bugatti Type 13 Brescia was one of the most popular Bugatti cars ever made. And during this time, Ettore Bugatti's son, Gene Bugatti, became increasingly involved in the company. Gene would go on to play a significant role in Bugatti's later successes, contributing to the design and development of some of the brand's most iconic models. After the immense success of the Brescia model, it was time for something even better. After years of hard work, Bugatti finally revealed the Type 35 in 1924. It was a car that was made to dominate both the racetracks, streets, and every other terrain. From the moment it roared to life, the Type 35 captured the hearts of racing enthusiasts. With its sleek aerodynamic design and the iconic Bugatti blue color, the Type 35 was a marvel to behold. Underneath the curvaceous bodywork lay a 2.0 8-cylinder engine that boasted a single overhead camshaft, a groundbreaking feature at the time. This innovative power plant, coupled with the lightweight chassis, paved the way for the Type 35 to redefine the standards of racing performance. The Type 35 was an immediate success. From 1924 to 1931, it dominated Grand Prix racing, securing over 1,000 victories and becoming one of the most successful racing cars in history. The Type 35 was not just a machine. It proved to be a symbol of Bugatti's engineering excellence. Racing legends Pierre Veyron, Louis Chiron, and Achille Varzi piloted the Type 35 to numerous triumphs. After the successful launch of the Type 35, Bugatti decided to get into the luxury car business and launched a 2L supercharged Type 38 and an enclosed roadster, the Type 40. A critical choice made by Atori and his son Jean, steering their focus towards the realm of the utmost luxury, leading to the introduction of the Type 41, renowned as the Bugatti Royale. The Royale was intended to be the most luxurious and powerful car of its time. Introduced in 1927, the Bugatti Type 41 was designed to be a symbol of power. Bugatti made sure that the clientele of Type 41 was made up exclusively of kings, queens, nobles, and royal families. The specifications of the Bugatti Royale are remarkable, even by today's standards. It was powered by an enormous 12.7-liter straight-eight engine, which was one of the largest automobile engines ever built. This massive power plant produced about 300 horsepower, a staggering figure for that era. The chassis was equally impressive, with a wheelbase of 14 feet, contributing to the car's imposing presence on the road. Sadly, the Bugatti Royale faced tough times when, soon after it hit the market, came the Great Depression. The economy was suddenly in really bad shape, and many people, even the super-rich, were having financial troubles. Therefore, because of the financial struggles of potential buyers, not many Bugatti Royales were sold. The car didn't become the commercial success Atori hoped for. In reality, things were really tough, and Bugatti almost went broke. To save his company, Atori signed a contract with the French government to design and produce rail cars. But as the rail cars did save his company from bankruptcy, a strike at the Bugatti plant in the Mulsine factory halted production. Meanwhile, his talented son, Jean Bugatti, worked tirelessly on designing newer models, such as the Bugatti Type 50, 55, and the famous Type 57 AC Atlantic. They won the Le Mans in 1937 and 1939, and it was clear that his son Jean was becoming the perfect successor for Ettore, who was now approaching 60. But all of that tragically ended in 1939. Despite the ugly years of the Great Depression, with the efforts of father and son, the company was soon back up and running. The Type 57 was a thriller, winning trophies in Le Mans and other championships. But that would all come to a crashing end in 1939. Gene Bugatti was driving his own car for a test 
when a mailman suddenly appeared on a closed track to take a quicker path. Gene tried to avoid hitting him, but sadly, he swerved and crashed into a tree. He died instantly. It was the beginning of the end for Ittore. Devastated over the loss of his son and having already lost his brother to suicide, Ittore was a lost soul, only to have things get worse. Just weeks later, the Second World War broke out and Bugatti's plants were once again occupied by the German armed forces. This was pretty much the end of Ettore. Already saddened by the death of his son, the war forced Ettore to fly off to Paris and sell what was left of his company. He had already run into so much debt that he had no choice but to sell his beloved namesake car company for 50 cents on the dollar. When he did get to Paris, he designed aviation engines and torpedo boats. And when the war was over, because he was Italian and never sought French citizenship, the French state did not support him. And because Italy had allied with the Germans, Ettore was accused of collaborating with the German occupiers. After the war ended, he attempted to get his company back and sued the state. He lost. Things got even worse when in 1944, Ettore's wife Barbara passed away. By now, his health was beginning to deteriorate, but he didn't give up. He applied for French citizenship in an effort to get back what was rightfully his. And when he eventually did, it was too late. Just 10 days after gaining back his properties, Ettore Bugatti passed away at the age of 66 after suffering a stroke and lung disease. No one else in his family was able to produce cars or continue the operations of Bugatti. In 1956, the Bugatti company ceased automobile production. The brand remained dormant for several decades, and Bugatti became more of a historical name associated with classic and luxurious automobiles. The rights to the Bugatti name changed hands several times over the years, but not a single car was produced. The mighty dream had come to a tragic end. Or did it? Thirty years after the end of Bugatti, in 1987, an Italian entrepreneur, Romano Artioli, stepped up to revive the lost name of Bugatti. He was basically the owner of a prosperous Bugatti dealership in Italy, and therefore Artioli recognized the dormant potential of the Bugatti brand and sought to re-establish it as a symbol of automotive excellence. Taking the right steps, Artioli founded Bugatti Automobile SPA in 1987, establishing it as an entity separate from the original Bugatti company. The company's headquarters were situated in Campagalliano, Italy, marking the beginning of a new era for the iconic brand and bringing back its legacy from the ashes. The crowning achievement of Bugatti's revival under Artioli was the introduction of the Bugatti EB110 in 1991. Launched to commemorate the 110th anniversary of Ettore Bugatti's birth, the EB110 was a mid-engine supercar that showcased state-of-the-art technology. It featured a remarkable 3.5-liter quad-turbocharged V12 engine, a six-speed manual gearbox, and a pioneering carbon-fibered chassis. This new car was capable of reaching top speeds of 213 miles an hour, and the car quickly became a phenomenon. The Bugatti EB110 gained attention not only for its historical significance, but also for its exceptional performance. But despite its initial success and acclaim for the EB110, only 139 were ever built, and Bugatti Automobile started facing financial challenges again in the mid-90s, leading to its eventual bankruptcy in 1995. Once again, it seemed like the end of Bugatti's legacy. But as fate took its turn, only a couple years later, Volkswagen acquired Bugatti as part of its strategy to expand the portfolio of luxury and high-performance brands. Volkswagen aimed to position Bugatti as a premium and exclusive brand known for its high-performance sports cars, and that's exactly what happened, and this is the car we know today. The first Bugatti car under the Volkswagen Group was the Bugatti EB118 concept car, which was unveiled at the 1998 Paris Auto Show. The car was designed by Giugetto Giugiaro, 
The Bugatti EB118 was designed to echo the 1931 Type 50 and the 57 SC Atlantic. It was a sedan with a 6.3 liter naturally aspirated W18 engine that produced 555 horsepower and 479 pound of torque. The car had a permanent all-wheel drive system and a five-speed automatic transmission. It could accelerate from zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds and had a top speed of 155 miles an hour. The car's body was made of carbon fiber. The interior of the car was designed to be luxurious and featured leather upholstery and wood trim. The car also had a number of advanced features for its time, such as a built-in GPS navigation system and a rear view camera. However, it was just the beginning of a completely new era of luxuriousness. The next year, another concept car, the Bugatti EB218 was revealed at the Tokyo Motor Show. It was almost similar to the EB118, but longer and more spacious. But after years of anticipation and fervent speculation, Bugatti finally unveiled its piece de resistance, the Veyron. The automobile world had been abuzz with excitement, eagerly awaiting the moment when Bugatti would announce its ultimate dream car. In 2005, the Veyron 16.4 made a thunderous entrance onto the global stage. It was a groundbreaking hypercar that pushed the boundaries of automotive engineering and performance. One of the defining features of the Veyron was its remarkable speed. Veyron claimed the title of the world's fastest production car with a top speed of 254 miles an hour. Its quad turbocharged W16 engine, a marvel of engineering, generated a staggering 1,001 horsepower, making it one of the most powerful production cars of its time. With a price tag reaching $2 million, this masterpiece became an emblem of luxury, capturing the attention of a discerning clientele. Throughout its production span from 2005 to 2015, the Bugatti Veyron was an exclusive marvel, with a global production limited to a mere 450 cars. This stringent limitation meant that even individuals of considerable wealth faced extraordinary challenges in acquiring one of these extraordinary automobiles. Despite financial affluence, the rarity and desirability of the Veyron rendered it a truly elusive and sought-after gem in the automotive world. The Bugatti Chiron was first unveiled at the Geneva International Motor Show in 2016 as the successor to the Bugatti Veyron. The high-performance sports car is named after the driver Louis Chiron, who had a successful racing career in the 1920s and 1930s. The Bugatti Chiron is available in three variants, including the Chiron Sport, Pure Sport, and Super Sport, with a starting price tag just around $3 million. Bugatti once again broke the record for fastest production car with a top speed of 305 miles an hour with the Bugatti Chiron. With this, Bugatti also became the first car brand across the world to cross the 300 mile an hour mark. However, Chiron's speed is electronically limited to 261 miles an hour for safety reasons, mainly arising from the tires as Bugatti concluded that no tire currently manufactured would be able to handle the stress of the top speed the Chiron is capable of achieving. It also holds the record of fastest 0 to 250 miles an hour, which it reached in 32.6 seconds, after which it only needed 9.4 seconds to break down to standstill. And the Chiron is equipped with several unique features as well. The car's rear light strip is a distinguishing feature. The more than 80 red LEDs guarantee that all road users know that a Bugatti Chiron is in the immediate vicinity. The Chiron also has a distinctive two-tone paint option. Keeping up with the tradition, only a total of 500 Bugatti Chirons were ever produced. The hype around this hypercar was so big that the first 200 cars were sold even before the first was delivered. In 2019, at the Geneva International Motor Show, Bugatti revealed a one-of-a-kind luxury car, the Bugatti La Voiture Noire. It was a tribute to the long-lost Bugatti Type 57 SC Atlantic, 
it was a 16-cylinder engine with four turbochargers that can produce 1,500 horsepower. The car was priced at $18.9 million and was the world's most expensive new car ever in the history of the automobile world. The name La Vorture Noire is French for the black car, and the car was indeed black. And the car's interior had a minimalist design. Bugatti La Vorture Noire has a top speed of 261 miles an hour. Only one of it was ever produced and was sold to an anonymous buyer who was rumored to be Ferdinand Peach the former chairman of the Volkswagen Group. Over the years, Bugatti has received prestigious awards for its excellence in design, engineering, and performance. And in 2024, the new Bugatti Mistral Roadster will be the final W16-powered car from the legendary brand. Bugatti says the roofless Mistral will be the fastest open-top production car in the world. The Mistral is estimated to cost about $5 million and deliveries should start in 2024. But even if you have that $5 million, you're still out of luck. They're already sold out. And speaking of luxury automobile creators, the story of Enzo Ferrari is also a fascinating tale, building an iconic sports brand. And you can watch that video, along with other videos on the founders of Jaguar and Rolls-Royce, right here, right now. If you like what you saw, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future releases. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.